When talking premium golf balls, often we think of the big brands, TaylorMade, Callaway, and of course, Titleist, the number one ball in golf. But recently, the golf ball market has been flipped on its head with direct to consumer golf balls. And today we're gonna to talk about the best direct to consumer golf balls you can buy for your money, just how much they cost, and why we are so adamant that these could change the face of golf forever. We have a series on this channel called Talking Balls. That means that we get to talk balls about some of the latest and greatest golf balls that come to the market to help you improve your game and improve your bank balance. Today, we're gonna to choose my top three direct to consumer golf balls, talk about just how they do perform, talk about just how much they cost. And we're gonna kick things off here on the first hole at Woolley Park Golf Club. So we're gonna to go top three and we're gonna go in order. So in at number three of my top three golf balls that you can buy direct to consumer and save some money, I'm gonna go with the Snell MTB Prime X golf ball. So this is a three piece European golf ball. It is designed to be in line with the Titleist Pro V1 X. It looks fantastic, it feels great. When I tested these, I was really impressed with the performance. Wasn't quite up there with the ball speed of a Titleist Pro V1, but certainly for the price, you can't really go wrong. So we're gonna play a handful of holes today. We're gonna to play a handful of holes with each ball and see exactly which one comes in at number one. Guys, comment below, have you ever used direct consumer golf balls? And if you have, which one is your favorite? Right. So to kick things off with the Snell golf balls, I recently did the review on Snell golf actually, and it was a gentleman called Dean Snell who actually used to work for TaylorMade and for Bridgestone, and he used to make the golf balls for golfers like Tiger Woods and Davis Love the Third. So what he doesn't know about golf balls really isn't worth knowing, but then he set up Snell golf, and the idea behind that was to bring you guys premium urethane balls at a fraction of the price. What can we score on this opening hole? We're gonna play a Texas scramble with another PGA Pro. Straight away, a lovely low ball flight. One thing I love about a urethane cover is you can start to pick your trajectory just that little bit more. And as you can see with the Snell MTB Prime X, it's a three piece ball. It's designed to have low long game spin, high trajectory, controlled iron spin, a slightly firmer feel, and premium short game control. The big thing you'll see about a lot of these balls is a lot of them are three piece construction, and a lot of them have a urethane cover. I can hear a glove just opening slightly. That must mean Chris is ready to tee off. Oh. Snell. That is a great shot. Really shows the versatility difference there because I hit a lovely low shot. Chris has hit it really, really high. Chris, I don't think you're yet to use the Snell, are you? You weren't on the series or the episode, should I say, of Talking Balls when I did these. I have tested them at some point, I believe. So, yeah, a golf ball that I've seen before, one that we haven't seen for maybe a good year or so, but. They're obviously competing with the premium brands as well. One of the things I love about these direct to consumer golf balls is sometimes as a golfer, an average golfer, you might have to buy quite a few golf balls throughout the season. And you can actually get a better deal the more you buy with some of them. So that does make a lot of sense rather than just spending $50 on Pro V1s, $50 on Pro V1s, $50 on TP5s. And again, yeah, save a bit of money. So two great tee shots here on the opening hole. You'll see very similar distances, even though we had two totally different ball flights. We'll go with Chris's because he's a tiny bit closer. One of the big things I love about so many of these golf balls is that feel. You can hear this is a little bit firmer than potentially a Pro V1 or even some of the balls that we're gonna talk about later in this video when we talk about number two and number one. But the fact that it is urethane means it is a nice premium plastic and that's what you really wanna look out for. We've got urethane, we've got surline and we've got ionomer. Surline and ionomer are a little bit of a cheaper plastic and they do tend to launch higher off the bat and you can't really control the spin rate as much. So hopefully we can control the spin rate here and send a nice one into that flag. Oh, just like that. Come on. We'll have a bit of that, Chris. Flag high. Yes, it's very interesting, this part of the game, because obviously a lot of times when people test balls or buy balls, you're obviously thinking, like I'll show you on my videos, which are the longest of these, but we have to make sure that we do get some consistency into the green. Not only consistency, but one big thing then, obviously, with wedges is how durable are they? Obviously, we know that you're not paying as much. We know it's a three-piece. We know it's a European cover. But do they last as long for what you're paying? Go on. Played a bit of a duff and run there. For Damien? Not my finest strike. That wasn't the ball. On screen now, Damien, Chelsea legend. <laughs> and Blackburn. 
So let's see if we can birdie the opening hole again. You can see nice control there. The ball's not spun back too far from a pretty nice wedge distance. It's just stopped nicely flag high. And again, that's something which you need to be able to control. People love the idea of spinning back golf shots, but often when people spin back a wedge, it actually means they're going further away from the hole. So it doesn't really help that much. What are your thoughts on the lineup of this? Because that's, I like that. I like that they've added a little bit to it rather than just an arrow. Yeah, it's very much like what obviously Titleists have done on some of the Pro V1s. You can add those extra lines, but Ken Price-wise, I think it's a good job because it's one of the one of the main things that a lot of cheaper balls miss out. They don't spend the time on the markings. You can clearly see the roll. Tell you what. Oh, I can clearly see. I misread it. And I do think this is an interesting video, guys, because I could have called this video the top three budget golf balls of 2023, the top three cheap golf balls of 2023. But I don't think these are cheap or budget. I think they're just great value. And there are obviously cheaper balls on the market. So you can go and get a pack of Titleist True Softs. You can go and get a pack of Strix and Distances, but they're not necessarily going to perform better for you than these kind of three-piece urethane balls, which are designed to directly compete against the more expensive balls. Must do. Oh, how's that not gone back at the end? That is a par on the opening hole with, oh, we'll go with this one actually, with the Snell MTB Prime X Golf Ball. What is in at number two? Let's find out. So in at number two, you did see a plethora of golf balls, a smorgasbord, oh, a smorgasbord. of golf balls in the introduction to this video. And these are the kind of big balls that we did test or the kind of ones that I think are the best D to C. Uh, we all know that I love the Kirkland. We all know the Seed is a fantastic Pro V1 rival. The Mint Wizard Pro is a very interesting golf ball that a lot of you might not have heard of. Again, three-piece professional tour urethane ball. We've all seen this one. The Vice Pro is a ball which it's pretty much taken, especially America, by storm, being able to get these in the drip, kind of, yeah, drip finish. You can get them in red and blue and all sorts. You can get them from Costco now, actually, as well. And then we also have the wheelhouse ball, which was available in black. Now, this isn't in the top three, because for me, the box is too hard to get in. No, they have this kind of matte finish on them. I don't particularly mind it, but especially on a day like today, that just wouldn't look good after a few holes, would it, Chris? So you can get them in a standard finish, but for me, they're not in the top three. So what's it at number two? Because they are all the options. They're all they're actually all a three-piece urethane ball. In at number two for me is the Seed SD01 golf ball. I really, really enjoy this golf ball. I really enjoy the cost. I really enjoy that it is the kind of golf ball that should be up there against the Titleist Pro V1. Again, three piece, again, urethane cover. And again, you buy more, you save more. So the SD01 is the answer to the Pro V1 Seed Do claim on the website. They do quite a lot of different balls and that's one of the things I do like about the Seed products and about the website. You do get quite a lot of different options. The SD05 is a kind of low spin model, which is the equivalent to a, a Titleist AVX and the SD02 is more a kind of Pro V1X. So I like that actually on the website. They just say, look, if this is what you use, this is what you can probably play that'll be about the same. And again, you can save a bit of money, right? Second hole round the corner, try and miss those two bunkers, dog leg to the left and a two tier green. I'm gonna try and go straight over the corner with this seed SD01 with this paradigm driver and that is why i like that golf ball so much that is position a for quite a lot of a saving that was good wasn't it mm, great point. so the three parts behind this golf ball it does have a soft cast urethane cover an ultra thin dew point hpf mantle layer and a high energy rubber core also features 336 dimples on there. So again, very similar makeup to a Pro V1. Be interested to see just how good these do perform against it. Nice. Very good. So Chris, you've actually been playing with the SD0 for quite a while now. What are your thoughts on them? Because you've been playing them more so than probably most golfers I've played with. Yeah, I mean, the, oh, oh, 
that good throwing them about. For me, the main thing is that obviously you're starting to see the flight that you'd exactly expect for that. So it compares, like you say, on the website to a Pro V1. For me, you get the same kind of flight. I know what I'm trying to expect. You don't get the one that suddenly goes a little bit high. Feel-wise, very similar. If you did blind testing for me, if you gave it to two different people, no markings on there, I don't think they'd be able to tell the difference. Obviously, it's just a case of overall, what's the durability, which you have to test over a lot of rounds. Yeah, and the really interesting thing for me there about durability of a golf ball is how long does a golf ball last for you guys at home? Because I know that I generally lose a couple of balls every couple of rounds, that kind of thing. I won't go as far as saying a couple of balls every round, but if I'm spraying it, then I will do. Interestingly, the tee shot with that driver and the seed ball is literally perfect. I couldn't ask for any more than that. Would a Pro V1 go further? Would a Chrome Softer, a TP5 go further? I have tested these on the launch monitor, and yes, you get a tiny bit more ball speed, maybe an ounce of a lower spin and a couple of yards out there. But just because you see that on the launch monitor doesn't necessarily mean you'll see it out here, depending on what bounces you get. Hmm. Just 50 on you there, mate. I would hope so with a five. <laughs> well, we've done exceptionally well to avoid that divot as well. That would have been really frustrating that someone's not put that back over the weekend and the seed would have been underground. You get it? Oh, yeah. oh. Right, again, we're going to try and play a nice kind of low spinny shot in here. We don't want it to spin all the way back down because there's a false front and that would be a negative shot. Can we get it up just to get flag high? Be the distance. Be the distance. That's good. You're just not going to play a better distance shot than that, are you? Oh, you're not. I will get that divot, but I'll let you go first, because every chance you take an absolute slug as well. A slug. So that is flag high up there while Chris cleans that wedge. And again, are you going to get better performance out of a more expensive ball? Maybe over time you might see something a little bit, but if the ball's consistent, which it should be, and you use this ball all the time, you'll not see a big difference anyway. Nice. That sounded gorgeous. Two incredibly consistent shots into that flag, and this is going to be another birdie opportunity using a direct-to-consumer budget golf ball. So again, just fantastic consistency there, realistically. Two pros hitting very similar shots with the same golf ball and very similar results, this time coming back closer to the flag, which is exactly what you want if you are going to get a ball that does move backwards. Guys, out of interest, how many golf balls would you say you lose? Because the average golfer, I'll put it on screen now because I can't remember exactly what the number was, but I was astounded to know just how many golf balls the average golfer does lose in a season, and it can soon add up. I can imagine. <laughs> also, guys, get in the comments below, what do you think is going to be the number one direct consumer golf ball? I bet you already can guess, but it might be a bit of a curveball. You never know. Oh, robbed. Over the edge. Lovely roll on that. I will say one thing, like an area for feedback on the seed, I think. I think we could get a slightly better alignment aid on there. I think it's just a kind of straight line. It could be a bit easier to help. Yeah. I mean, it being blacked out does help. Obviously, you can see it a little bit better. So, but yeah, maybe one area they could improve. Nothing's perfect, Christopher, is it? Even your camera skills booting it. It was a putter that for a change. Was it? Yeah, normally kicking. Yes. One under par, that is a birdie using the Seed SD01 golf ball. For me, the second best direct to consumer golf ball you can buy in 2023. What is number one? Let's get on the next tee, let's find out exactly what it is. Okay, so it all comes down to this. What is the number one direct to consumer golf ball of 2023 that could help you save money? also improve your game. So I've tested all of these balls within an inch of their life, and the ball that stands out for me has to be this one. That, that was really not as elegant as I anticipated doing, but it's obviously the Kirkland Performance Plus. It's the Costco golf ball. This is the latest one. I don't think it has to be the latest one. I saw no difference at all when testing this one against the kind of first generation one. I believe you can get them in yellow now, which might kind of appease some golfers. But for me, a pound of ball still three-piece urethane still performs very well is about a mile an hour slower than a pro v1 and you see kind of a yard difference in that a couple of yards maybe with rollout but for me for the price that you can get these for whilst picking up your toilet roll your toothpaste and your dog treats i really don't think you can do better for direct consumer right let's see if we can birdie this next hole fifth hole par four gorgeous hole looking down narrows up at driver distance a big grass bunker to avoid on the left 
and a well bunkered green just short. Right, let's see if we can hit a similar drive to on the last hole. Absolutely boomed that down there. And I have used the Kirkland ball for quite a while, so I do like how this feels and sounds. And I really like it when it performs like that as well for a pound a ball. Ridiculous. That is really the main factor, the contributing factor why this ball is number one. A pound a ball, you don't have to buy a load of them, you just buy a pack of 24 for around £24. Now they might have gone up a little bit with the new ones, but the old ones certainly you could get inclusive of that for a pound a ball. Shot. Nice penetrating flight. Probably up the right. Right guys, middle of the fairway with the Kirkland. One of the big things that I would say about all six of these balls that I had out here today, I'd have them in the bag, I'd use them, especially if I'm just out playing my friends for enjoyment. One of the comments that's kind of stuck in my mind from my videos is someone commented on a ball video and said, unless you're competing at an exceptionally high level and you're spending more than $50 on a dozen of balls, you probably need to just think about where you're spending your money because you might be a better golfer by using that money for lessons or for green fees and for more enjoyment especially when you can get such good golf balls for such a small price. Come on, flag high again. That's a lovely flighted shot. And again, that proves why for me, this is the best golf ball you can buy direct to consumer. I've picked the flight, I've picked the distance, I've hit the fairway, and that's the result. Oh, leaking, 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 leaking. That you have seen on this video do just kind of back up exactly what we are trying to say here when we talk about direct consumer golf balls and how much money you can save while still playing pretty good golf so chris you're going to go through some on your channel you've got a little bit of a different opinion yeah it'll be interesting to see what that is Kirkins. but i've got that for two birdies in a row like oh that's just a poor stroke james all right mate thinking about your roll <laughs> blue roll toilet roll instead of the ball roll Oh, shocker. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favourite direct consumer golf balls, and apart from that, I'll see all of you at the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.